Yeah, g'day, Mark here. Now I've been getting a few queries about why I switched from FreeCAD to Onshape. So I thought I'd do a quick video to explain it in more detail. As a bit of background, I've been using CAD since AutoCAD 14. I've used Katia, a bit of Inventor, Onshape, and also FreeCAD. I've never been a power user, but I've had a fair bit of experience with different software packages. Now, when I started this channel, I was using Onshape with its free maker subscription. But once I monetized the channel, by my understanding of the user licensing agreement, I would have had to have purchased a pro license. But a small YouTube channel like this just doesn't generate sufficient revenue to justify that. And that's why I changed to FreeCAD. By the way, just as an aside, when I say FreeCAD, I'm not saying FreakHead, which seems to be an album from some Russian rap group. Now, it's an amazing time we live in when we've got access to open source software like GIMP, Blender, FreeCAD, and especially Linux C and C, all created by enthusiasts or supported by enthusiasts. Now, once I got accustomed to the somewhat quirky approach to modeling of FreeCAD, I managed to model all of the things which I wanted to do in it. However, after about three years of use, there are certain aspects of it which made me start looking for an alternative. And it was at that point that a friend pointed out that Onshape was calling for influencers to join their kind of affiliate marketing program. And full disclosure, it was me that reached out to them and requested to join it. With my small channel and its limited reach, I'm not receiving any direct sponsorship, but they have provided me with a user license for Onshape Pro and also provided me free of charge their bootcamp training program, which is a very, very good set of training videos which runs for multiple hours. I'm about halfway through them. They're excellent. Now the first issue is performance. I use this 2021 M1 MacBook Pro, and for all of the basic models for simple things in FreeCAD, it rips. But I'm working on this long-term project to build a replica of a 1920s three-cylinder radial motorbike engine. And that means that all of the components need draft angles in every direction and fillets and radiuses on, on all features. And I've monitored the file size as I add features to the parts. And what I find is initially the first few things you do don't bloat the file much at all. But eventually the file size starts running away on you. And every feature or fillet you add massively increases the bloat of the file. And the, the problem too is because these are castings, I almost never model a single pattern. So for each part that I mold, I end up needing multiple different variants or parts or related parts. For example, there's the pattern. Often there's a loose part that goes in to complete the pattern. I may need an odd side for altering the split line in the mold. Then there's core molds for generating sand cores which go in and form voids. And lastly, of course, I need to design machining tool paths of the parts once they're finished cast. So the result of all this is the performance of this computer just can't really keep up. Okay, I could go out and buy a massively powerful computer, but I don't have a budget for that. So although I can get the job done, I can get each individual part modeled, at least so far. Probably the most complicated part is gonna be the crank case assembly, which is gonna have maybe nine different cores. I'm pretty sure I can get these things done, but it's become clear to me that even if I can model each of the individual parts, there's no way I'm going to be able to assemble them all in FreeCAD and then animate them and make cool videos and stuff out of them. And that's because the sum of all of these files would just be too excessive to render. Now, Onshape is a cloud-based service. So none of the computational work is done on your local computer. It's all done on their servers and your computer is just basically displaying a website. I still expect my 
completed engine model to be pretty heavy once it's finished. But it's no longer my problem. I'm assuming that Onshape have got massive servers or a contract with a big cloud provider, and therefore that grunt horsepower to do all of this work is simply available. It wouldn't be a Rotor SMP video without some random content. Right, well, I've already cut up the first crop of this year's chilies. Now we've got jalapenos. What are these ones? Anchos, but I think they're called poblanos when they turn red. Okay, these ones? These ones are called Pasilla Bajio. And the yellow ones? The yellow ones are just called yellow chilies. <laughs> Right, for my smoker, I'm going to need some more sawdust. Now I want some nice tasting ones. So I've got some cherry here that's got a split in it, so I can't use it for woodworking. What I'll do is just run that through the circular saw and turn it into sawdust. But before I can start that, the last thing I cut was an old pallet. I've cleaned out this. Let's get the worst skittle of dust back out of it. And after two days of smoking, my wife's made a bodo sauce out of the resulting chipotles. Yum. Now my second issue with FreeCAD is somewhat symptomatic of its open source environment. Rather than being a holistically designed piece of software, it's really a collection of pet projects from various different developers. Now that's a bit flippant because there is a central leadership team and they're obviously very active and there is some commercial support for that central team and they've done a fantastic job, especially with that big push they did to release FreeCAD version one and did a lot of bug smashing. There's been a dramatic improvement there. However, there are still some aspects of it which may make sense to the developers, but leave a, a user scratching their head. I think the most glaring aspect of this to me is the parallel universe between the part workbench and the Park Design workbench. I, for whatever reason, started using Park Design. It seemed reasonably familiar to me, somewhat similar to Katia, so that's what I've always used. Sometimes you'll come across a method, you'll try and do something, and the only way to get it done is to jump across to the Park workbench, which I'm totally unfamiliar with. And to me, that dichotomy between the two of them just makes no sense. At least it seemed to me that some of the tools in the Park workbench are not usable on a model which was generated in the part design workbench, and vice versa. Once again, it could just be my lack of expert knowledge with the system, but it always seemed very illogical to me. So I guess if I had one recommendation to the development leadership team of FreeCAD, it would be you need to slaughter some sacred cows. And that part design, part, workbench dichotomy would be right up there. <laughs> You know, Onshape, being commercial software, was developed by a hierarchical organization, and therefore, it has none of those issues. It has a very consistent look, feel, and functionality across all of its tools and all of its systems. This then brings me to the third issue. I haven't had anything which I wanted to model, which I was unable to model in FreeCAD. So that's in itself very, very impressive that this open source software at least has been able to, to do anything that I've wanted of it. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's user-friendly or intuitive in every sense. The basic usability is reasonably easy to learn, maybe a little quirkier than most other software packages, but as I say, easy enough to learn with a bit of effort. However, there are two areas where it's been far less predictable, I guess, for me. The first one is fillets. Now, I did a Patreon and members live stream just on this topic a while ago, and I summarized some of that into one of my earlier videos. In comparison to every other software package I've ever used, I found 
free CAD would quite often fail to fill it, and often these failures would occur for unexplainable reasons. The specific case I used on that one video was just putting a fillet around this fin here. And every other software package did it with no problem. In FreeCAD, I would model the same thing twice and sometimes get different results. Sometimes it would fail, but only below a certain radius. So if you, if you, if you lowered the radius enough, it would do it. But there was no real predictability to it and there was, didn't seem any real reason behind it. Um, that was actually checked by one of the more expert users of FreeCAD who ended up raising a bug ticket for it. Onshape's filleting engine is far more predictable, at least for me. Most cases, it's, it's very good at finding where it needs to propagate to and doing that just by clicking a single segment of a line. Occasionally, I've had cases where the first click leads to some sort of a weird, funky end of a fillet, but then if I click a second line that forms part of that extended geometry, it tends to fill out and complete the, the fillet without any drama. It seems to be a more robust filleting engine. Now, a more extreme example of difficulty I had with it was trying to get this text onto this part. Now, it seemed to me to be a pretty simple and obvious request of a software package to put curved text onto a part and then extrude it. Now, in the case of FreeCAD, luckily, Mango Jelly has a YouTube video where he found a methodology for doing this and provided detailed instructions. That video is 21 minutes long. It took me two full goes through the video to sort of get an understanding of what we were trying to achieve and how this methodology is supposed to work. And yet even once I understood the methodology, it took me two full evenings of mucking around with it to actually get that result I was looking for. The most frustrating aspect was because it's a macro that you have to run, every time you ran the macro, it blanked out all of the data you would put in. So I was having to iterate through this macro, changing one variable at a time to try and understand which effect each variable had, you know, things like alignment of where the text would be, where the text would be relative to the diameter of the part, text spacing, all of these things were a number of different parameters in the macro, and every time you, you ran it, you had to re-enter all of it, which is why it ended up taking me so long to find exactly the, the settings that I wanted to do that. Now on the one hand, Two thumbs up to Mango Jelly for finding that method, writing the macro, and also doing such a fantastic video explaining to others how to use it. That's part of the whole cool side of open source software. The, the community is fantastic. However, for my own personal use case, I'm trying to generate a video every single week. And to lose two evenings just on you know, iterating through software to try and get this right shape. Yeah, that's too much. That's too intensive for me. Switching to Onshape, Curve Text is also not a standard tool. It's in the custom tools library, if you call it that. So you do need to add custom function, sketch text. Now, I only spent about five minutes playing with this before realizing that I should record it. You can see that this is simple and intuitive to use. So first up, before using that tool, I need a guide curve. What's the text gonna follow? In my case, it's a circle. So then I can start the tool, select the guide curve, and select the plane to draw on, which in this case, I'm just using the default XY plane. So the standard text in the tool defaults to fitting the curve. That's a bit of a mess. So I need to select center, and now we can see the text pop up more normally. By selecting center, we now activate the menu option to choose the text size. The whole idea of this tool is to give you embossed extruded text. So that's built into it. Just need to choose the text height. Uh, and then there's some options to bias the text, spacing inside, outside the line, letter spacing, that sort of thing. Now I don't see how to tell it whereabouts on the circle to start. So it looks like I need to do the single text at the top and then do a polar array of those text components to put the second set down on the bottom. But that's also easy enough to do. Okay, you might be wondering, 
why am I redrawing the cylinder head? Well, my version 3.5, which is the last version I did in FreeCAD, is good. And all I've done is copy that into Onshape. However, the odd side I made for it to bring the split line up to the fin, I didn't really think it through. So I made it this size, which fits into my casting flask. However, I can only fit one of them into the flask. Casting is so much work, because I've only got two of those flasks, only doing two at a time doesn't use up a full crucible of metal and is just a massive waste of time to duplicate it. I need at least three of them, but realistically, with machining errors and uh, inclusions and stuff like that, I'm probably gonna make more like eight, nine, ten of them. So what I did is rotate them through 90 degrees to be able to do two in one flask. And because the part then ends up too big for my bamboo X1 carbon printer, I just used a spline down the middle and broke it into two pieces. Unfortunately, I made a mistake on this one, so I'm just printing off one more version. But you can see how this will allow me to print a total of four at a time in my two casting flasks. So hopefully I'll only need two melts and have the job finished. So to summarize, the switch to Onshape was really a reversion to a software I preferred to use before. I would like to say a big thanks to the community around FreeCAD. It's definitely a usable solution for most things, especially simpler parts, but it wasn't fulfilling my needs anymore. There's no real financial incentive for the move. Obviously, if this relationship works out well for Onshape, there is potential for me getting sponsorship or advertising from them in the future. But at the moment, with a, with a channel of my size, I do appreciate them giving me access to their software and also their CAM machining beta because I feel it more closely fits my needs. The pro version is very much directed towards organizations because it's got an excellent interactivity built into it where you can share your model within your organization. You don't have, have to send files backwards and forwards. It's got a commenting engine within it. It's really designed for cooperative work. And there's of course a permission system built into it as well. So you can also share certain aspects of your design, for example, finished drawings with a supplier or something like that. So if that's something which is interesting for your needs or your organization, I would appreciate if you'd use the affiliate link down below. That'll get you a six month free trial period with the pro version. And one last thing, I'll be doing a members and Patreons live stream next Wednesday at 2100 Central European time. So I'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching.